people of Reddit. What is a surprisingly unknown survival fact that everyone should know? If you are drinking plenty of water but still showing signs of dehydration, headache, fatigue, muscle aches, blurred vision, stumbling around, you may be low on electrolytes. Salty foods can really help with this, but oh rehydration salts such as Pedialyte work even better and should probably be in more people's backpacks. Disclaimer. Those symptoms aren't limited to dehydration and can also occur due to heat exhaustion, hypothermia, or altitude sickness. You just solved a big problem for me. Holy sheet. I forgot about my salps. Drip drop. It's like Pedialyte balanced for adults. I drink it in the backcountry, after long runs, or when I make poor decisions regarding whiskey. It helps so much. If you accidentally disturb a beehive or wasp nest and are being swarmed, do not run for water. It seems intuitive that jumping in water will keep the bees off you, but actually they will wait for you to resurface and resume stinging you. Instead, run as fast and as far away as you can. Bees wasps are territorial and will not easily leave their home range. So once you leave their comfort zone, you're pretty much safe. Or set yourself on fire. Taps for it. Use a cotton ball soaked in Vaseline. Or a tampon. Barrel cactus in the Sonoran Desert are not full of water as is commonly portrayed. Instead they are full of acidic solutions that induce vomiting and diarrhea if consumed. These can easily be fatal for a dehydrated person in the desert. The barrel cactus fruit by contrast, is one of the most agreeable edibles in the cactus world. They are easy to pick, thornless, and tasty. If you drink it, you'll see a friendly giant mushroom, mushy giant friend. We're walking in circles. I've seen that same spirit mushroom five times. If you get stuck in your car in the snow, stay with your vehicle. Hypothermia makes you delirious and you can wander the wrong direction and freeze to death. Your vehicle is also a lot easier to locate than you are. When I was younger and traveled a lot, a friend from Minnesota told me to keep an unopened bottle of water, a blanket, matches, candle and a rope in the car during the winter months. A wax candle will provide enough heat to keep the car warm enough to survive with the blanket around you. Tie the rope to the car if you get out to relieve yourself that way you can find your way back by following the rope. If snowing, water, well that is obvious. Canadian here I do the same. I also my sleeping bag lives in my trunk during winter. Also super convenient if you need to crash on a couch after a party. The other thing is to make sure the car exhaust is clear if you keep the car running you may very well kill yourself by carbon monoxide otherwise. Also if there is an empty bottle you can pee in it and use it for warmth for a while. If you are lost in the wilderness, if you have shelter and a source of water, and if you have reason to believe people will be looking for you, you are usually better to stay put than to try to find your way out. Wandering around lost you expend a lot of energy. You could easily get into a far worse situation and anyone looking for you will likely start at your last known or expected location. Which, if you are lost, you might be wandering farther from. This is not always the case. It depends on if you are injured or not, and the nature of the injuries, on your relative safety where you are at, how far you are relative to your expected or last known location, how visible you are and a number of other situational factors. It is often worth a low risk climb to a better vantage point if possible. People have died a few hundred meters from a road which could have led them to safety. I've participated in a number of lost personnel searches. This is very good advice. If they know what area you were in they'll simply grid it off and start doing line searches. If you stay stationary, they will find you. If you move around, you could move out of the search area or into an area they've already searched. Stay your behind in one spot if you want to live. The majority of animals are scared of explosive noises. So the bang snap toy can save your life. Edit. Wow guys. Thanks for my most upvoted comment yet. Edit 2. First award 2. Thanks. If chased by a bear, do the bend and snap. Got it. Not if you're surrounded by the police. You can squeeze relatively safe water out of moss. Obviously you should still boil it and, and it's going to have some dirt but it way better than drinking out of a steam or puddle. 
The amount of research I've done on MOS for my thesis approves that this is indeed a safe method. You seem like you have an interesting doctorate. What was the subject of your thesis? Just because you're drinking water doesn't mean you're safe. You need to take in salt as well. I've seen this kick peer plus bohems big time. They drink and drink and drink water but still overheat throw up pass out because they didn't take in any salt or electrolytes. I didn't learn until I started taking holidays to hotter places than normal that I can be quite sensitive to the heat. I thought I was doing a good job looking after myself and drinking plenty of water but two holidays in a row I ended up throwing up from the heat and honestly feeling pretty shitty. After the second time I did a bit of research how to better look after myself again. I was drinking plenty of water so I wasn't dehydrated, and found out that throwing up from the heat can be a symptom of drinking too much water without replenishing the salts. Started making sure to drink things like Gatorade and adding little sports salts replenishment to my water and haven't had a problem since. If you somehow are in a situation where you feel like you could drown and have no energy to go on turn on your back and do the backstroke. Saved my life while at the beach last week after getting sucked out by rip current. Float for your life. I used to teach swimming. And for people who aren't comfortable floating. Focus on keeping your belly up, like a balloon full of air. If you spread out your arms, it might make things easier. If you can't fully backstroke, because maybe you can't stay on top of the water well enough. Or you can't extend your arms like that. Swim like a frog by lifting your arms above your head and then pushing them back towards your body. Think jumping jacks. The ability to weave. Looked at as more of a craft than a survival skill. But my grandma taught me that if you can weave you can make clothing, shoes, traps, shelter, etc. With nothing more than the vegetation on hand. This was hammered home later when watching that show with naked survival people. The guy Harris the girl because she spent most of the first two days weaving but in the end he had to be taken out because he was sick yet there she was having crab for dinner. Naked and afraid. My son and I love that show. You can really tell who is and isn't prepared for it. My favorite episode was the fat guy whose whole strategy was to sit around living off his fat reserves while the other people actually tried to hunt, eat, build etc. When defending yourself, there is no need to fight fair. I tell my son, 14, this. Obviously you do not get violent until someone else does. But if someone has the intent of hurting you, it is fair game to punch them in the balls or worse. If by worse you mean castrating them with your bare hands, then yes. Dry lint is super effective for starting fires. Also why you should clean the arcing lint trap. Exposure and dehydration will lock you up much faster than hunger. Bring spare socks. Your feet will rot if you don't. Rule of threes. Three minutes without air. You're dead. Three hours exposed to extreme weather. You're dead. Three days without water. You're dead. Three weeks without food. You're dead. Edit. Damn. This blew up. Lot of people splitting hairs. The idea is it's easy to remember and it keeps your priorities in order. Yes yeah, some people can live longer than 3 days without water or 3 minutes without air but you're not really thriving and your average person may not make it. It's a memory device. Thanks for the awards. Top comment ever. Thanks Sparky. Posted this on reddit before. Posting it again BC it's important. Contrary to popular belief. If an alligator is chasing you. You should not run in zigzag. Do one zig and then run straight. The alligator is not going to try to follow the zigzag. It will just run for you straight and you'll be slower. Do one zig so that the alligator will have to do one zig if it wants to get you. And then just run in a straight line like your behind is on fire. Edit. Do not provoke an alligator or crocodile. This is meant for people that somehow accidentally provoke them. I am not an expert. I was told this by a guy that worked with handling alligators. If you leave an alligator alone. They will leave you alone. Was told that crocs were more aggressive. Just stay the yuck away from both types of animals. Thanks for the award. See, it's my first one. Imagine you dumb you look from the alligators prov if you zigzag. Alligators probably all like yet this is natural selection at its finest. 
During the winter, it is way better to be slightly cold than it is to sweat. If you start to sweat, you can go hypothermic way faster. Reminds me of a quote from Bear Grylls. I need to work quickly before hypothermia sets in. But not too quickly. Because then I'll start to sweat. The sweat will freeze. And then hypothermia sets in. While he's technically on the right path, he also a total hack and spews a bunch of awful, awful advice. Edit. Well this comment blew up. Let me briefly explain why I think he is a hack. I come from a extensive background of technical rock limbing and alpinism and every bit of media he has put out on my sport is pure and utter nonsense. Such as this video, where he is epicing on a beginner rated route at 5.5 climbing very very poorly, pretending as if it's something rad, exaggerating the remoteness of where he is, actually 5 miles down the road from Vegas in the Calico Basin at a popular climbing spot for beginners, wearing ridiculous gear, and making an obscene amounts of mistakes, many of which would get him hurt or killed if he fell, there are many more like this one, yes he climbed Everest by the mountaineering route hike up, but so could any fit person who is taken on by a guiding service and can slide a jumar up a rope. His Everest ascent is presented as climbing expertise. Yet anybody who is well acquainted with the sport knows he hasn't even scratched the surface of alpinism climbing and this combined with his climbing content makes it clear that he has no substantive knowledge of the activity. He comes across as somebody that chasses jittles, but learns very little actual expertise is not at all an expert on what he presents. He is a good showman and military man, but that is about it when it comes to adventure. Mirror is the best way to signal for help. You can use the reflection of the sun directed at a boat or plane like you sibling would to annoy you. The proper way to use a mirror to signal for help is to hold up one hand with a peace sign and position it so that whatever you are trying to signal can be seen between your fingers. Then shine the light from the mirror on your fingers. This guarantees that whatever you are signaling can see the light. I need a random sketch guy to appear. Some survival tips that I don't see that often is what to do in a panic slash human stampede. Watch out for bottlenecking. I think that's what the term is called. Bottlenecking is when a large group of people are all head towards one exit which causes massive congestion. This is extremely dangerous because this is when suffocation can happen which is actually a big cause of deaths when a human stampede happens. To avoid this look for alternative ways out like a window or fire exit. If you see someone fall help them up. I cannot stress this enough. People can die when they fall over in a stampede. They get trampled on and everyone thinks that someone else is going to help them. But if everyone thinks that then nobody will do it. So just help the person. Alternatively, if you fall grab the ankles of someone running by. Not enough to make them trip and fall, just to slow them down, so they are forced to help you. If you're worried about being rude, it's either this or potential death. Like I said earlier, suffocation is a major cause of death during a panic. Each time someone breaths in, or makes themselves smaller that space someone else takes up and eventually you have no room to breathe. To help avoid this, put your arms out in front slash sides of you, so you have room to breathe. Do not geo against the crowd. This is a bad idea, if everyone is going one direction and you try to go another you will fall and get trampled on. If you lose someone in the chaos, just go the way of the crowd, and look for them once you are in an open space. If you have luggage, that you need to carry just leave it behind. It will only slow you down, and potentially be the reason you fall. If a small child is with you pick them up, so they don't get trampled. Keep them close to your body, and do not let Geo no matter what. Try to go to the sides of the space you are in. Most people crowd in the center, because that's where the exit is. This causes mosh pits that end up suffocating people. Stay to the sides, and try to find another way out that isn't so crowded. I know that's a repeat, but it's very important. If anyone has any additional tips, feel free to add them in the comments. Also, if you want to know how dangerous a human stampede can be, read articles about the Phnom Penh stampede.